Ivy Ridge? Um, a couple of things. I'm just um, the the boards themselves are fairly similar, if not almost identical, to a uh, Sandy Bridge existing Z68 board. A couple of things physically that's different about these boards. First of all, um, um, the buttons that we have, like the OCG and the, mm -hmm. uh, the power reset buttons, we move them away from the bottom of the board. So once you populate something on the third PCI slot doesn't block anything. Okay. Um, secondly, we are using a 90 degree uh, USB 3.0 headers. Uh, the USB 3.0 plug is physically like cables are thicker because it increases electricals. So having it over here, is, it's uh, it makes it easier for most cases to have it installed without blocking any type of card okay. and stuff like that. You know. Obviously, the heatsink is not a uh, production design. It's engineering spec stuff. You know. Um, Probably the only other thing that the, you'll notice is because the board, for example, this is a GD65, so but it looks a little bit barren, is because Ivy Bridge is lower TDP. Mm -hmm. So, generally speaking, the mid-range boards that uh, in the, in the, even, even in the same segment, the power phases will just be a little bit less, you know, compared to like before. Um, um, that's that's the GD65. The GD80 is basically everything is the same as far as what I just covered, mm -hmm. um, except there's one thing. That's different, and that is uh, Thunderbolt. Okay, you got GD80 Thunderbolt. GD80 will have Thunderbolt. Uh, the chip will actually go here, but I, I don't can't show the chip. Right. Uh, no, I understand. But that. the uh, and the rear I/O is also incomplete. Um, okay. Uh, but GD80 will have Thunderbolt uh, as far as a um, uh, one of the connection options available mm -hmm. on the board. Mm. And that's about it. I mean, everything else that I mentioned before. Uh, if it's just between Z77 and Z, uh, Z68, it's all laid out. Right, here. they're they're laid out the same. Yeah. So and then the you know the the um, should be should be some should be early Q2 if, if I remember correctly, but I don't have the specifics on that. No, I understand that. Well, it's going to be interesting. Um, just a couple questions about it. We still have the SSD caching capability with it. Yes. Okay. As, far, as far as I know, Intel is not taking that out. Uh, okay. there, there's no, no changes to that. It's, it will be still available. I, 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 or will there be any improvements to it or any changes? I don't know yet. Okay. Understood. And then we have this one. That's our um, flagship uh, Z77 board. I, yeah, this is more. That's more for end user education purposes. Um, this board actually just uh, was announced uh, last week. Correct. Uh, Extended ATX board, all black to construction. Um, um, starting from the top, you I mean you could see the dual A pin. Mm -hmm. um, as a 22 phase hybrid power delivery system. This, for comparison's sake, uh, for for reference purposes, uh, this board delivers up to 750 watts to the CPU alone. Uh, it's really meant for you know overclocking. And I mean, when I mean overclocking, I mean like really crazy overclocking. Uh, seven PCIe slots. Um, uh, as you can see, there's a matte black construction and everything. Um, a lot of key overclocking features too, like PCIe ceasefire. This was first shown on the Marshall, but this allows you to kill, if you have four graphics cards populated in the one, three, five, and seven slots. You can shut it, off it the other you slots. To, uh, shut off individual slots so that you can do one, two, three card benching, or if you're trying to troubleshoot and you're trying to figure out which card is defective or whatever reason, you don't have to physically remove mm -hmm. it. The base clock adjustment, the plus and negative, um, so you could adjust the base clock on the fly. Um, uh, OCG obviously is kind of standard. Um, also multi BIOS. This, the Z7, sorry, the X79 boards actually have uh, most of our boards have two BIOS chips on there with a switch on here. Mm -hmm. But then with this board, um, you can have uh, there's a third removable BIOS chip. So, okay. so overclockers can actually take this out and reprogram re re it themselves. So okay. you don't have to go through the BIOS here to program mm -hmm. anything and for fear of corrupting the BIOS or whatever. Gotcha. Um, uh, additional six pin right angle uh, connected on this edge of the mm -hmm. board for, for PCIe um, uh, additional juice, uh, USB 3.0 and the, the, uh, the, the SATA connections over here. And then the voltage checkpoints. Now this board is really new. Um, Nobody's really been able to push any CPUs yet. Uh, if they have, they haven't posted any public results. But it should be noted that uh, even though it hasn't set any flat out uh, frequency records yet, um, this board currently does hold the record for base clock at 168 megahertz. Oh wow. The next closest one is the next step down which is at 150 something. So it's not just like a small jump, it's actually a pretty big jump up. Um, 
And um, is that on LM2 or is that on? on I air? don't know. It is on HW Bot. So okay. uh, if you need the details, I, you could probably find it on HW Bot. Um, I don't know the specifics, but I do know that it, it, the current uh, highest space clock is held by this board, mm -hmm. even though the board has been out for a week. And I think it's one of the overclockers that was testing the was, used, was testing the board. Uh, they got hit that. Um, I, have a, I have a feeling it might be an LN2, but um, who knows? <laughs> yeah. And then this board, as far as availability, should be the end of this month in North okay. America.